Hey guys, welcome back to the DNN Medical Series. This is your girl Nikki, and today we'll be talking about the diaphragm. So we'll be talking all about the anatomy of the diaphragm, and I have a cartoon picture here that I got from Teach Me Anatomy on the website on Google, and I'll also show you guys a physical or a real picture of the diaphragm as we finish with the cartoon. So we're going to learn on the cartoon, then apply it on the physical diagram. So, before we move on, I just want you guys to look at the different labels so you just have an idea of the different openings and the different areas. So, the diaphragm is this thing right here. So, let's start here. We see this thing in the middle. This is the central tendon. We see here, we see something called the cable opening. I don't expect you guys to know the names of these things yet if this is your first time. So I'm just introducing the names to you. So when I'm making reference to them, you have an idea of where to look. So central tendon, cable hiatus, sternal attachment right there, esophageal hiatus. When we say hiatus, we just mean opening. And aortic hiatus or opening. And the last one on our diagram is a vertebral attachment. Okay, so now that we have a general idea of the different areas, let's just talk about what is the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is this dome shaped, double sheeted skeletal muscle. So if they ask you what type of muscle it is, it is skeletal muscle. And it's located in the inferior or lowermost aspect of your rib. And what are the function of this big organ? So firstly, it separates like, the thoracic portion of your body from the abdominal portion. So basically, it separates your chest part from your belly part, basically. And another thing that it does is it undergo contraction and relaxation. And so it alters the volume of your thoracic cavity and the lungs when you're inspirating or you're expirating. So when you're breathing, your diaphragm is going breathing in and out or you're inhaling or exhaling, your diaphragm is going up and down to, <clears throat> to aid breathing. So yeah, that's your diaphragm, the function. And so we're gonna just go on to the different anatomical position. So as I said, it's the lower aspect of your ribs and it basically have different attachment. So you have peripheral attachments as well as central attachment. So you know that peripheral would be in the center, peripheral outside of the center. So it has three peripheral attachments. So the peripheral attachments are like the lumbar vertebra. So you can see the lumbar vertebra is here. We call this a vertebral attachment as I just introduced to you guys. And the lumbar attachment and the arcuate ligament you can find peripherally. Another thing we can find peripherally is basically the costal cartilage of ribs 7 to 10. So ribs 7 to 10 and it attaches directly to ribs 11 to 12. So basically, peripheral attachment for your diaphragm is your lumbar vertebra as well as your costal cartilage of ribs 7 to 10. And the last thing peripherally is the xiphoid process of your sternum. So you can see this. I made it the sternal attachment right here. So peripherally, again, we have the lumbar vertebrae. We have costal costal part, the part attaching to the rib cage, and we also have the sternal part or the sternal attachment attaching to your sternum. So remember when we say peripherally, we mean outside of the center. This is the center, outside of the center we have sternal attachment, vertebral attachment, as well as costal attachments. So when we <clears throat> move on to talk more about the vertebral attachment we have some crus so we call these little tendons or little attachments we call them crus so we have a right crus and a left crus so basically on a specimen your right is actually the left part of the body and your left is actually the right part of your body so it's like you're looking from somebody foot looking up into their face. So they're laying down on the bed and you're down at their feet looking upwards. So their right is your left and your left is their right. So this is right here, which would be the person's left. So 
So let's start with the right cruise, which is this one. Since it's our left, it is the right cruise. Hope you guys understand this concept. So the right cruise uh, arises from here, one, two, three. You can see lumbar one, two, three, basically, vertebra and their intervertebral disc. And you can look at the fibers. Watch me use the cursor. Look where the fibers are going. You see that the fibers come around this opening. And what did we say was this opening again? The esophageal hiatus or the esophageal opening. So the right cruise fibers encircle the esophageal hiatus or opening and forms a splinter. So it's called a physiological splinter to prevent the reflux of gastric content. So reflux of content coming from your stomach to go back into your esophagus. So you don't want that. So the right cruise, not the left cruise, the right cruise of your diaphragm help to wrap around your esophagus and help to act as a physiological splinter to prevent gastric reflux. And the left cruise is here, nothing much about it, it's just there, attaching to uh, lumbar vertebrae 1 and 2 and their intervertebral disc. So the next thing here, this big thing in the center, we we'll finish with the peripheral now guys, we're going to the central uh, process. So the central process is here. You can see this discoloration, it's a lighter color. You can see it on the actual specimen that it's a lighter color. In the center, we have the central tendon. And it's just basically muscle fibers of the diaphragm combining together to form this tendon in the center right here. Now, we're going to look at something super important. We have some openings. What are these openings for? So we have some things going through these openings and they're super important because they'll definitely ask this in exam, what goes through these openings? So remember, I started with this one. We're going to start with this one. It's called the caval hiatus or the caval opening. So if you look carefully without me telling you, you'd see that the caval opening is actually in your central tendon. Can you see that? So this one is in your central tendon. The others, not so much. But the caval opening is in your central tendon. And how I remember which one is in it, I just say caval starts with a C, central starts with a C. So the caval is in the central. So that's how I remember it. And what goes through your caval opening? If it's a caval opening, you'd expect the inferior vena cava to go through it. So the inferior vena cava go through this one as well as terminal branches of your right phrenic. What did I say? Right phrenic nerve. Not your left, but your right phrenic nerve. So remember, as I said before, this was your right cruise. So we're on the right side, basically. And the cable opening is on the <clears throat> in the central tendon towards your right. So what goes through it? If you call it cava or cava, it can be inferior vena cava or inferior vena cava, as well as your right phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerves are a nerve that supplies the diaphragm. So basically, those nerves extend to supply the diaphragm, and so they go through this opening. The right one goes through the caval opening. So, to remember what goes in it, we say IP. So I'll just say SIP, C-I-P. I don't know it's corny, but I don't know if you guys will remember it that way. So caval, inferior vena cava, and phrenic nerve. Right phrenic nerve, because we're on the right. Now let's look at the esophageal hiatus. So the esophageal hiatus, uh, you'd expect the first thing... <clears throat> The first thing you'd expect to go through your esophageal hiatus is what? Your esophagus. Pretty easy. So your esophagus goes through your esophageal hiatus as well as your right and left vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve travel down on the side of the esophagus. So you'd expect them to go the same path. So yeah, esophageal opening goes through the, es the esophagus goes through the esophageal opening as well as the right and left vagus nerve, as well as some esophageal branches of your left gastric arteries and vein. So you notice it's more on your left 
Mm -hmm. So you'd expect that your left gastric arteries and vein go through this one. So just before I jump through the last one, let's just revise these two so you guys are not confused. Cave all opening in the central tendon, mostly to the right, what goes through it? Infina vena cava and right phrenic nerve. Osophageal opening, the right crus of the diaphragm wraps around it, forms a splinter, and what goes through it? The esophagus, esophagus and the right and left vagus nerve that travels with the esophagus, as well as esophageal branches of the left gastric arteries and veins. So the last opening we have here is the aortic opening. So when you hear aortic opening, it's pretty easy. You'd expect the aorta to go through it. So the aorta goes through this one, the thoracic duct goes through this one, and the azygous vein goes through this one. So I remember it, I think I remembered it by A-T-A. -A. Aorta, thoracic duct, and azygous vein. So now that we know what goes to the opening, I think I want to give you guys a little more information, not to confuse you, but I put it at the last, to tell you the different uh, vertebral level of these openings. This is super important. So the first one is a cable opening. You notice here, this one is higher than the other one. So the cable opening is at the level of T8. The esophageal level or the esophageal opening is at the level of T10. And the aortic opening is at the level of T12. So you can see 8, 10, 12. Again, T T8, T10, and T12. Now, I just give you guys like five seconds to process that and I'm going to give you a little thing to remember it. Uh, in order to remember this important one, the esophageal opening, right cross around the diaphragm, wraps around it, the esophagus as a word is 10 letters. So that's how we remembered it in class. So the esophagus as a word is 10 letters. So you'd expect it to be uh, a T10. And I think the cable opening, I think vena cava was eight letters. V-E-N-A-C-A-V-A. -A -A. That's eight letters. Yes, guys. So vena cava, eight letters, you know it's at T10. Esophagus, ten letters. T8, sorry. Cable opening, eight letters, level T8. Esophageal opening. Esophagus is ten letters, level T10. An aortic one. You just know that the other one is T12. Or if you want to spell aortic hiatus, I can't remember the word we spelled to get 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So yes, aortic opening is literally 12 letters. Aortic hiatus is 12 letters, so that's at T12. So this is super important as to why we need a mnemonic or something to remember it for. So guys, yes, let us just do a general overview of everything we learned today. So this is a diaphragm. The diaphragm is a skeletal muscle. We have a central tendon. We have different openings. We have an attachment of a sternal attachment. We have vertebral attachments as well as costal or rib cage attachments. So here, the central tendon holds a hole and this hole is called the cable opening which is at the level of T8 and what goes through it, infina vena cava and right phrenic nerve. The next one is the esophageal hiatus. Esophagus is 10 letters, what goes through it. Left and right vagus nerve as well as the esophagus as well as esophageal branches of the left uh, gastric arteries and veins. And the aortic hiatus is 12 letters and it's at the level of T12. And what goes through it? The aorta, thoracic duct, as well as, what's the other A? I want you guys to tell me the other A without me saying it. The azygous vein. I'm sure you guys said it. And that's basically it for the anatomy of your esophagus. And yes, one last thing. The esophagus is uh, supplied by the nerve, the phrenic nerves, C3, 4, and 5. So we remember the mnemonic, 3, 4, 5, 
keep the diaphragm alive. So those are what supplies it. Phrenic nerve, roots, three, four, and five. So that's basically it for your esophageal. Not for your esophageal. That's basically it for your diaphragm today, guys. So, if so yes, guys, as I promised, here is an actual real-life diaphragm. You can see it here. You see it. There are attachments to the rib cage, there's attachment to the sternum, there's attachment to the vertebra. So you can see the muscle, you see the clear part in the center is the central tendon, you see the cable opening which has the vena ca inferior vena cave on the right phrenic nerve. We have the esophageal opening which the esophagus goes through this one as well as the right and left vagus nerve and the esophageal branch of the left and left gastric vein and arteries, as well as we see the aortic hiatus or opening, T12, where the aorta, thoracic duct, as well as the azygous vein goes through. So yeah, T8, T10, and T12. So that's it for your diaphragm video today, guys. Hope you guys enjoy. Bye!